Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Do you recognize this gadget? Yes, it's the NES 30 re uh, Retro 8 Bit Do uh, gamepad that I did ages ago, absolutely ages ago, and it hasn't left this box. I have to admit, I have not used it, and it's, it's a little bit embarrassing, but then. Sometimes things just don't quite fit the bill, and remember it came with a little FC30 shield, how nice. Um, so we had to play with it and basically didn't do anything with it because, I don't know, it just didn't have a use case. And I kind of since found out, by the way, this weird thing isn't a, a case to protect it, because I thought, why, don't, why doesn't it fit that way so it protects the buttons, because it sort of clips on that way, lamely. And people said, no, it's not a case. What that is, apparently, it's for playing on your you know for your phone like that so my mistake um just to cover the features of this it was bluetooth uh, and it did feature extra buttons so it wasn't really a nes because it's more like a super nes because it's got these uh buttons the shoulder buttons some extra buttons start and select and your d-pad so i thought why not uh, have a look inside it now then i mean it's a little bit it's a little bit late if you're looking for a teardown video to do some sort of major project on its release but I think it's fine. We want to have a look now. They probably need their batteries replacing just about now too, so it's it's good. If you've had one and you you know you were giving it a lot of heavy wear and it's been through a thousand plus cycles of charge, it's probably not holding its charge anymore. So maybe I'll entitle this video "How to Change the Battery on 8 and uh, maybe I'll get some how-to video traction going in rather than just random teardown. So we'll pop that there. Catch the screws. Catch them all. Catch them, catch them. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch... Bit rattly. Catch them all. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just curious, because I just noticed these little little notches here. You might just see them on the camera, and that's obviously to hold the uh, that weird phone cradle thing. <laughs> so I've just opened it, like, kind of the wrong way, because I can see all of the, the gubbins is trying to fall out there. Okay. Let's... Let's get the gubbins out. So I'm going to remove the gubbins manually to get them over there. And there's a spring, an errant spring. Right, good. So you've got the standard control pad rubbers, and then underneath that will be the plastic bits. So I don't know how size-wise they compare to original stuff. Interestingly enough, though, I do have this one that happened to be lying around from a Nintendo SNES Entertainment system, and. Uh, similar size not quite similar similar size and uh, actually it's yeah, it's kind of the same geometry I'd say as a, a SNES isn't it but I guess Nintendo had the patent on d-pads didn't they so they probably haven't changed that much woohoo so that's all it is and it's, it's quite a thick plastic this is a really thick case you then you get aggressive when you're playing a game and you're trying to twist it look even now I'm trying to twist that and it's pretty bloody rigid so that's good so what can we see so you got your big battery on there and I'm not going to pop it off because oh no I will it's a 1.85 kilowatt hour battery and it is somewhat removable for a change I didn't pull off any tracking it's soldered directly very nice We'll check that voltage later to see how it's fared. I don't know when my video went out, but it must be a year or two at this point. Um, let's have a look and see what we can see on the PCB. Let's do a bit more zoom as well. Let's go maximum or thereabouts. So you've got your touch contacts for up, down, left, right, select, start, X, A, Y, B. And there are some teeny, teeny tack switches. So there are tac tactile switches where you would expect them. And looks like we have an LED there, double LED and a single LED. And that probably lines up with, yes, there are some windows on the case here. One will be the Bluetooth light and one will be, uh, so the, the, the dual one is probably the Bluetooth light where it'll flash red and blue. You know, you've seen that. And then that'll probably be a green one next to them. And then there's your USB socket. And there's an 8 megahertz crystal and there's a chip there and I'm going to rotate the whole thing around a bit so we can see what that chip is and that chip's markings are GD32F103 ARM GD32F could that be a similar chip to the uh, STM series anyway microcontroller and judging by the tracking 
the USB is kind of going through it. That's probably a protection uh, circuit there. And that's going into that. So that's reading USB. So you probably can plug this in as a USB device. I haven't really tried that, but if you plug it into your PC, it probably sees it as a normal wired joystick if you do that. And there is uh, RDK. I think that'd be the Bluetooth chip. Yes. And all of this stuff is to do with Bluetoothery. And you can see here there's a track that's running down this edge right down to here. And there's some tuning components there. You can see there's different places for different uh, caps. Um, and that's your Bluetooth antenna. So pretty neat all in all, isn't it? It's pretty neat. So I think, though, it's time to check how our battery's done in there. And I'm pretty sure it was at 3.2 volts. Ooh. Uh, yes it's uh doesn't say <laughs> okay great uh i just noticed something on the back that's quite curious there is this additional here a usb port so i'm wondering if that is a uh, some programming port oh hmm. hang on a minute just studying this Catch him, catch him, gotta catch him all, gotta catch him all. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I would have to buzz that out to see if it matches up with there, but uh, yeah, it seems like that could be a, a test port of some description, or maybe it was a during development there's a USB port that might go to the Bluetooth module. You never know. Sometimes those things are just USB devices. They'll be, you know, hooked, there'll be a USB host on that, and Bluetooth could be just being attached by the USB host. Anyway, doesn't it look tiny? It looks tiny on the camera, this far zoom, but it is it's reasonably big. Right, so I'm going to be using my Micronta Range Doubler Multimeter. That was sent to me by Mike Halliday, and I still have this, and I still have the letter, and I have always wanted to use it, but Mike, you can see, I keep it in pristine condition because it's got all the original parts in the box. So... I, I now, now that sort of Tandy and Radio Shack doesn't exist anymore, it, it, to me now this has become even more valuable an item. We don't want to break it, do we? But we do want to use it because the multimeter's got to be used. So I'm going to turn that on. I've just noticed something interestingly. Is it quite zeroed? Catch him, catch him, got to catch him all. Why am I singing Pokemon tunes? No, the battery is well dead. It is well dead. Crikey. I'm really surprised. I've never seen something with a lithium cell that has zero in it. I mean, that is a zero rating. I'm almost like, is that battery toast now? Am I losing my mind? No, definitely. Ooh. So I'm going to be uh, trying to uh, charge this up, I think. That's, um, that's bad news. I wonder... Um, I wonder if there's a design problem on that. That's not good. It's quiescent current draw is a bit too a bit too naughty. So you can see the LEDs there on there. Um, let's just try it again now with the the old power attached. See if there's anything in there. So you've got 3.57 now going into the uh, battery, and we'll just check that out on this guy. Woohoo! You go. You can do it. Interesting enough, this is on the 10 volt range, so um, that's your 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Just under that 10 bit would be the 3. And yeah, we'll work on this one. We'll work on this one. So that's it, really. Hopefully, that's been of some interest to you and you've learned how not to use a micrometer. As ever, thanks for watching. <laughs>